Hello my soccer universe, it has been a while that we made a video on the Austrian Bundesliga action. Yes, I made two short videos, but uh, after the international break I literally did not find the time to record a proper video. I'm gonna try to make up a little bit of the lost ground, but I also refer you to those short videos whenever we talk about that round. And when I left you before the international break, we just had Sturm Graz taking top spot from Salzburg a point ahead and now three rounds later they in the meantime had a four point lead and now this is reduced to a two point deficit however we also have my team Lusk having an absolute gauntlet of games and getting in the league seven points against the top opponents meaning Salzburg away meaning Rapid away and meaning Sturm Graz away, seven points and now we're here within two points of the top of the table and it makes it for, I don't want to say a title race yet, but at least at the at, oh, there are three teams relatively close up top and that is really exciting and from a last perspective and we'll talk about each individual game that will be the highlight of this video, I'm a Lusk fan so this is where we have to uh, put the focus on, but it actually looks good what they're playing. They really used the international break well to work on the deficits. They were showing in the previous window between the two previous international breaks and now having some really good, good performance. And the only thing that needs to pick up a little bit is Europe. But I think that's going to happen as well if it's enough to uh, move on into the spring uh, in Europe. That remains to be seen. But... We have so much ground to cover. There's also a cup round in there that was really exciting, although it didn't have any upsets, but it was a really exciting cup round that I would say we have to jump straight, straight in and we'll start 21st and 22nd of October with round 11. So this is basically the half regular season uh, point. And you see already the first result. Salzburg 0 oh, one Lusk won. Lusk won in South Salzburg. It was the second home defeat for Salzburg in a row. Something that hadn't happened until I think since 2014. So nine years. And both came against Linz teams. And Blavis Linz didn't win there unexpected. Uh, um, undeservedly. Unexpected for sure. But un undeservedly. But I have to say Lusk actually put it a notch up and actually fully deservedly won in Salzburg. And probably should have won by more than one goal. That's the level of the performance. It was hitting them on the, on the counter and especially in the last few minutes. If they convert their chances, this could have gotten ugly for Sal Salzburg. Yes, Salzburg is a good team. They made a few changes again. It was, you know, head, head of a, Euro, uh, a European round, but Sal Salzburg just uh, took the schneid of Salzburg. Uh, Lask took the schneid of Salzburg. It's as simple as that. And the winning goal came through Schul in the 34th or fourth after Ljubicic assist. And then, especially Elias Havel, later on, but also going, in, I mean, it has to be 2 0. Salzburg had a really good chance at the end and only one shot, but it was really uh, noticeable how little chances Salzburg had. It was a really good two -t team performance by, by Lusk. And at the same time, uh, the, uh, the matches were played because of European commitments at the same time. Sturm Graz played the other top duel against Hartberg, who, having a really outstanding season at, at this moment, found themselves down after four minutes. Turn it around just, uh, just just before the half, and at that point, Sturm Graz had a four-point lead in the table. Another team that actually had an upswing uh, is Austria Vienna. That I have, I probably should, should, should have mentioned before. They got a two-nil win in Tirol. However, it was a very controversial one because Potsman at tenth should have been sent off. Then Austria Vienna was the better team, especially after Guggenick got got you know, for a last man red card. But it also continues the story for Tirol, who um, they're not playing great. But they're also not unlucky. The uh, the uh, run of the play is not going to them. And then the other Vienna team, Rapid, you know, remember the derby that they managed only a nil nil against Austria Vienna, although they played most of the second half with two men more. They had a deserved one nil lead at Klangfurt at home. However, in a short period of time, 50 minutes between the 60th and 75th, Klangfurt ruthlessly Put in three, Kavaina uh, score going to, then Schwarz uh, adds a uh, third, and the only lay lay down Querfeld uh, could put one in at that point moment. Rapid was in a real, there was a real scrutiny upon Rapid, as there's usually, but this was meant to be a game where they actually assert themselves to move in, into the top, top six. Um, it looked everything but convincing what they were there. However, I have to say, since then, and we will see that their fortunes turned up also a teeny bit. 
then going to the past weekend this is the, my birthday weekend where i was in venice so i only saw a little bit of the highlights we had again um Salzburg bouncing back with a 3 0 over Altach uh, that gave, uh, you know, put some pressure on Sturm, who then duly lost a little bit unlucky, to be honest. Uh, I mean, the goal came through Grube, it was a defected, deflection in the 14th minute. Sturm missed the penalty uh, through Zakaria, have that, uh, have that in mind for a later <laughs> point. And um, Probably a 1-1 one, one at the half would, would have been the right, but then, uh, then Austria, a similar like Lewski in Salzburg, had many chances and should have put the game to bed, but they get a the huge win. And Austria Vienna getting another win, no goals con conceded there. Uh, after being in kind of trouble like a month ago, they're seemingly finding a little bit their footing. We had also a pretty huge win for uh, Lask City rivals Blauweiss Linz in a 2 0 over Wolfsburg. Blauweiss is ac actually finding their footing. They were in the first few games, they were out of the depth in the Bundesliga, being just promoted, but now uh, they're really finding their footing. And I honestly think, and I'm telling this uh, some of my colleagues who are Blauweiss fans, um, I don't think they will get really into relegation trouble unless something crazy, crazy happens. Speaking of crazy, um, and I have not talked much about it as well, except in a short video, uh, Rapid against Lask was an absolute mad game, especially the ending. And it came on the back of Lask losing with the last shot of the game to Union saint Julas away from home. And now, um, first half, I mean, it was probably Lask had a little, a little bit more of the game, but exactly Grugic, who... Did not come directly from Lask, but he is kind of one of those players that uh, the fans really like. Uh, he went for uh, he played for Lask uh, before, then went to Hyde. Hyde came, came back to Rapid. He gets the op opening goal. However, Ljubicic Im uh, equalizes just shortly thereafter. And I remember I was watching a little bit of the game while being on the tram in Venice. Yes, there's a tram in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> but overall Lusk had the better of the game in the first half but it was overall even a uh, few changes in, in in the second half i thought rapid actually took a little bit more of the sex at the second half and then right into that i don't want to say it was a huge uh, pressure phase but right in into the phase a brilliant pass by flecker to Ljubicic, who brilliantly converts with a lob over the goalie uh makes it 2-1 and i thought game done done and does it even more so when sattelberger for an L is getting a second yellow card is sent off i understand why the yellow is given and i was very happy about it don't 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 get me wrong but honestly if you look at the pictures there is no intent that this should not be a yellow card and i honestly would have been all right if he would have played on but at that moment i really thought yeah you're done it's it's settled no it was absolutely but because then you give away a penalty a penalty that never should have been one i mean andrade he doesn't even see the ball ball coming has his hand dang dang out the ball hits him on the back and it's not even clear whether it hit where it hit, hits him i actually think it hits him here uh on the t-shirt line it's not a handball the new law says you know we have the t-shirt line i don't get it Penalty was given, was really well converted by uh, Grull in front of the Rapid fans. And yeah, okay, 2-2 two, two draw, bleh. No, no. Brilliant ball by Jules and Balic in the 95th minute converts for a supposed winner. It was not the winner because then, and I don't know how they're defending that, that they won. Uh, Gail from, I think he was Jamaica, somewhere from, you know, from the Kirk Caribbean as is completely forgotten on the other end. And in the 96th minute, just a minute later, he gets the, e the equalizer. And it was just galling. It was just really, really, really galling uh, to have, have to. Because again, the last shot of the game, you concede a, a, you concede and you uh, lose points that would have been val uh, val valuable. But, you know, it was a great game. Um, as I said, the Bundesliga... That was a real advertisement for the Bundesliga as for well, other games as well. Although a little bit the goals were now going down. Before we go into the pass round and where I will spend a lot more time on the last game because we were there and there was a special guest as well. We have to talk about the cup round and I usually don't do it this way but uh, it's, probably, it's probably that way. It was really interesting. We had the two nominal upsets happened all uh, on uh, Tuesday. Where they open, uh, yes, they were down 1 0 to Wals Wolfsburg, but they get an equal to Ala, miss a penalty uh, in the 71st minute, but they make it all the way uh, into uh, the penalty shootout, which they miss, uh, which they win. 
And Leoma is a team that just got promoted to the second league, but they have ambitions. I mean, they had Carsten Janka as a coach, they fired him. I think they are really pushing to be within two to three years in the top league. Uh, watch out for that name, I would say. And then we had St. Burton completely steamrolling last place, uh, Lustenau. St. Burton being a top team, but not quite up top um, in the second league. And Lustenau is not lo looking good. Austria Vienna, a really hard fought win uh, over Klangfurt, especially at the end. Klangfurt could have scored. Hardware against Salzburg was probably nominally the best game of the round. Not the marquee fixture, but the best game because this was fourth against uh, then second. And Hardback gave it all. They had the lead through and troop. Uh, Radkov then equalized for Salzburg and especially in overtime, uh, hard we had two or three really good chances to uh, go there. The penalty shooter, they actually had to wait then for uh, like the Kaffenberg Lask shooter, which was really well done because they showed them parallel on, on TV. They wanted to have the Lask uh, shooter uh, out finished, then they went to the Salzburg shooter, shooter which yeah, I think was fine. Uh, two shooters in, in, in a row. Um, the first four from each team were con converted. Uh, Sole converts for Salzburg and then Avdijai, who had actually one of those big chances, also sees his penalty uh, saved by Schlager. And so Salzburg move on. Lask against Kapfenberg, um, especially from the second half on, it was besieging the goal of Kapfenberg, uh, who fought valiantly, but didn't create any chance. It was just one of those days where Lask could have played and they would not have scored, honestly. Uh, and then they score. And the goal, there was no VAR, is chalked off for offside. And honestly, when you see the replay, probably was not an offside. It was uh, by um, Peter Michael, who then takes the first penalty and puts it right up in the corner. It was a real good series of penalty from both teams. Uh, it, you know, all the first 10 were, were converted. And Lenny Pinto finally back, also converts in the Valhuta CC save by Siebenhandel. I have to say, Siebenhandel is now the reserve goalkeeper for Lusk. I have, I have to say, when I saw him, he's tiny. I don't think he will save one, but yeah, hey, he saved the decisive one. Lusk move on. Uh, Rapid for once did not have trouble, but last year uh, they also didn't have, have trouble in Innerstädten 5 1. Altach in another Bundesliga duel, aus Blau West Linz. And then the Graz Derby. That was the marquee matchup. This is league leaders of the second league against league leaders of the Bundesliga, at least at that point. And you thought it's going only one way because we three the five minutes had it in. Sturm Graz having a game under control without creating chances, though it has to be said. And then out of nowhere, GRK equalized. And this is, I call it GRK, I have to say, it's a Graz Athletic Club. Uh, I could say it's just Graz, but it's GAK. Uh, GRK in German. Uh, so they score uh, the equi e equalizer and then a few minutes later through Oberleitner get a, a go-ahead goal even however it should not, not have counted. I mean he's with his back to goal he turns and the ball, uh, ball goes off his elbow into the net. Crazy goal it has as it has to be said. Stadium rocking it's the same they shared the stadium but this was mostly uh, GRK fans in there. In the second half the same guy who scored the own goal Scores, an, uh, uh, scores the hand hand goal and scores also an own goal to equalize. But at that point, GRK had two really good chances where they could have made it and probably should have made it 3 1. And the game would have gone in a dif di different uh, direction. But so, in the end, it's Zakaria playing to Teixeira who gets the winner for Sturm Graz. Who, in the end, it was like the typical, yes, there was a uh, they were a level better. You have a, a little bit higher fit fitness, and this is what. Tilted it in the end towards Sturm Graz, but it was not an easy uh, win for them at all. And I would say, given the GRK have already a sizable lead in second league, it actually will be good if they also come up. So we have a Vienna derby, we have a Graz derby, we have a Linz derby. Uh, that's really good for, for the league. Um, we just have, have, have to see who will get um, relegated from the top league at the moment. And then we also got the draw. This was actually done after the uh, round, but I want to imagine here we have actually two pretty big games, Sturm Graz against Austria Vienna. And we have Lask playing at home to Salzburg and Lask coach Sage that said, yeah, this was the, uh, the draw that I wanted. You have to beat Salzburg if you want to win the cup and why not beat them at home? Uh, this is the first game after the winter break, uh, which is played on the first weekend of February. Everything achieved that they had because they want to give the Austrian national team enough preparation time for the Euros. I have to say, Rapid again get a very easy draw. St. Burton is not too far away from Rapid, but that they get a home game um, stinks a little bit, honestly. 
which gets us to the last round uh, that we had just on this past weekend. Lucena probably should have gotten something out of, out of the game at Austria. They had good chances, probably should have gotten a penalty. Austria may not win it very, very late. Again, without conceding a goal. Uh, they are suddenly really, really solid. Without maybe super convincing, but they are solid. And this is a turn turnaround that you didn't, didn't expect like even a month ago. Salzburg also, yes, get through go two goals through Konate, but uh, Tirol had their chances and probably could have gotten something out of that. That one, it didn't happen. Whereas the Corinthian derby between Wolfsburg and Klangfurt and ahead of the game, everyone was saying that it is uh, Klangfurt who is in better shape. No, Wal Wolfsburg with their great for forward line with Balo and Borgchi completely took, 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 took them apart and it uh, was a 4-0 route where Klangfurt even didn't have a chance. Um, a repeat then win in Alltag thanks to a brilliant Burgstaller goal. If you have the chance, Louis, look at the highlights. He takes it on the corner of the box. He's with the back two to goal. He uh, takes it with his foot on the other side and then uh, unleashes a half volley. A, a absolute great goal. Uh, probably probably, probably um, at least a goal, goal goes around, if not uh, a contender for goal of, of the season. Absolutely great one. Blavis had a 2 0 lead at Hartberg. But Hartberg already was very well in the game in the third, third, third minute. And then Hart, Hartberg turned it around and win it late through Entrup. There was a Poco penalty to get the equalizer. But we have to talk about Lusk against Sturm Graz. And in order to say that, I mean, we're going to spend a little, little time. Sorry for the long video, but, you know, we have to make up a lot of time uh, there. Um, this was a game that my friend Matt from uh, Football Shirts for for Dimension. He always said he wanted to visit and show that you can visit games outside uh, in Europe as well. And that's rather easy, easier than maybe go to pre Premier League games. And we had been in talks for quite a while since the beginning of the season. What games we always had this game kind of uh, eyed on. And yeah, at the beginning of October, it finally was uh, the fixture was put there. It will be played Sunday, 5, 5 o'clock, and we made all, all of the arrangements. I got him a ticket right next to us, so we were sitting together. We had a nice evening before that. We exchanged, of course, a few shirts that you will see later on. That is probably my best shirt of the year. It's in there. But I'll keep that one for as a Christmas present. Um, and so we met, and we went to the stadium. And yeah, I it was really cool to show to someone uh, our new really nice day stadium. It was a great uh, uh, a top game as well. So I was really excited about, about it because I know these two teams usually play good games against each other. And I hope Matt enjoyed it. I'm sure he will make a match report too. So I maybe keep mine a little bit shorter than his. However, that game was var, var, var. It was a really odd game, but I think it was overall a deserved 3-1 win for Lask. I mean, it started in the first minute. The penalty was given for Sturm. Uh, Varcek held up. Penalty taken by Sakare, who had just missed against Ostrivena. Again, it is saved by Laval, but then Böwing scores on the rebound. However, he was too early in the box. And so the goal was this disallowed. And basically, the first four to five minutes of that match was that scene. What also didn't help the game a little bit was that the Lusk fans, because again, Lusk played in pink in Europe, put on a boycott uh, for the first tw uh, 19 minutes and 8 seconds. Uh, so it was kind of an eerie ad as well, but this time the Sturm fans did not join into that boycott as well. The game then, uh, with this huge swing towards Lusk, uh, developed actually for Lusk, who uh, got more and more con con control of, of the game. There was another penalty situation where Sturm Graz potentially could have held one, but uh, Brass definitely jumps off early and gets uh, a yellow card uh, for diving. But at that point, Lask already was controlling a little bit more, uh, no, working still on creating chances. In the end, the uh, breakthrough came through Uzor, who has been wasting chances left and right, as a, but he a really nice shot, uh, sees it by Schul. Uh, from the edge of the box, it goes in right in front, in front of us. Then, panel panel is given, a uh, foul on Stojkovic. Uh, yes, it was a high boot. Stojkovic, though, before the counter comes, touches with the hand. I can see an argument being made for this uh, not to count. Panel is taken by Schul, who already missed against Hartberg. And it's again, I just said it to my buddy Matt. Uh, he missed the last, the last one, like I told him, that uh, the guy who shot against um, Lusk. 
missed his last one. And again, he actually said the goalie is really tall after, after the match. I better put it down the middle high. Just a little, a little bit off. And yeah, the Skerton, the Sturm goalie is so tall. He dived left, but with his hand outstretched, a great save. And I, I have the video here. It's, 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 it's actually, uh, if, if you watch it over and over, it's a really, really great save. However, a few, uh, few minutes later, Schul himself assists Stojkovic, who is free out on the box, makes it 2-0. Big celebrations. And Matt then said, you're going to win 3-1. He said, well, I hope that's true. And then it happened exactly how, it happened, how I thought it would happen if, if it would be 3-1. Sturm came. Had a good call for a penalty. There was again Stojkovic hugging Stankovic in the box. On a different day, this could have been given. Uh, I have, have to say, I understand why this doesn't come through VAR. Uh, they were pressing without creating too many chances, but they get the goal back. Um, because Lars cannot defend Teixeira. Uh, Vlodarcik takes a shot and is deflected by Schul, who was instrumental on all three go uh, all goals involved and uh, deflects it into his own, own net. Uh, but then nothing came from Sturm. And while they last seemingly were always second best to, to the ball, Sturm were overall uh, not dangerous. In fact, it was Lusk who they were dangerous. And finally, when the chain chain changes came, uh, there was a whole lot more danger there. There was a uh, Uso had a great shot. It was parried by the Sturm keeper. Then Balic, who had just come on, cannot get it on goal. was a wide op open net. Then the next one, uh, Uso scores, scores goal, was an offside. But uh, another count, 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 take a really nicely played Flecker to Horvath. And however, Tuchel makes it 3-1. It's a very well-deserved win. It was a great win. It was a really good game. And I hope, Matt, I know you told you told me you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to your uh, view of the game. But I really enjoyed that, that the game. The family also was very happy to be there. Uh, we had a really good time. It was a really good time with the five of us. Uh, I, I actually got, got, got my little daughter. She just wanted the game to be finished, that last win. And then they won 3-1. She was really happy to have that as well. But also the older one and my wife. Uh, it was a really good game, I have, I have to say. It was really fun. And that after a month not being the stadium, I have to say, for my wife, it was even a little bit longer. Which leaves us now with the following table. Salzburg back on top. Yeah, how, how exciting. But if you see 29, 27, 25, it's really, really tight. And Hartberg is not far off either. Klangfurt and then Rapid now on level with uh, Austria Vienna. Thanks to gold, if difference there ahead. Uh, have not been many changes on the bottom, but it seems clear, seems clear that Tirol and Lustenau, those are the two that go against relegation. But again, points get halved at the halfway point of the season. So it might get really, really tight. I'm curious if both Vienna teams will make it into the top six at the moment. I think only one of them. And if you look at the expected standing, it's actually Austria Vienna just a tad ahead of Rapid. Uh, but on the bottom, it's, uh, as I said, between Tirol and Lustenau. And up top, yeah, it's still Salzburg, Sturm Graz, Lask have only a minimum shot, I would say, at the moment. But, you know, things can change again. Points have to, might uh, play in their favor. And against the top teams, Lask have been really good this season. It was more or less, uh, less against the bottom teams, where it did not work out that well. Last round before the next international break is, of course, the Derby. Blau-Weiss against Lask already sold out in the teeny tiny sandbox of the stadium the blau had had in four and a half thousand uh hard against rapid is probably one that you should look out for same as austria vienna against salzburg well it was a long video but i think it was worth doing that uh to kind of get us called up uh give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video please let me know what you thought about uh all these games in the austria bundesliga and i will talk to you soon hopefully next week bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!